Synergy Field on an historic day. The final game being played here at Riverfront Stadium slash Synergy Field in Cincinnati, Ohio. Hall of Fame manager Sparky Anderson, the main spark throughout the first pitch. Sparky did it a couple times, trying to get it to Hall of Fame catcher, the guy he managed, Johnny Bench. JB moves up a little bit. <laughs> Just missed outside. <laughs> Just a bit wide. So the main spark throwing out the ceremonial first pitch. The Reds have taken the field for the final game of this series. The final game at Synergy Field in the Queen City. Larry Bowe's starting lineup this afternoon. He'll have Doug Blackwell in the center field leading off. Jimmy Rollins shortstop at second. Bobby Abreu right field hitting third. Travis Lee at first base pass fourth. Placido Polanco third base hitting fifth. Pat Brogue gets the day off. Ricky Lede will be in left field batting sixth. Marlon Anderson second base hits seventh. Johnny Estrada will catch him bat eighth. Brandon Duckworth the pitcher hits ninth. They're facing 37-year-old Jose Rijo. Only fitting that Rio gets to start here. He he really bolstered that rotation back when they won the World Series about 12 years ago. Eight starts this year, a five and three record, 5.05 ERA. 71 and third innings. He'll give up some hits. 19 walks, 34 strikeouts. Great career ERA for Rio, 3.23, 116 and 90. Against the Phillies, he's got very good numbers, 9 and 5 in his career with a 2.85. Rio was the most valuable player of the 1990 World Series. One ball and no strikes to Doug Glanville. in 2000 he's had five elbow surgeries I drive hit so Doug Landville leads off with a base hit and it'll bring on Jimmy Rollins umpires this afternoon Jeff Nelson calling the balls and strikes Ron Culpa at first Dale Scott at second and Jim Joyce at third Hitting at 245, leads the league in triples with 10 of them. 11 homers, he has knocked in 60. Just go out. He tries to get Jimmy at first, but throws it wide, trying to make the throw while he's falling down. Well, not a good start on what could have been a double play ball. They end up with first and second, and nobody out. Walker saying to himself, I can't wait to get to that new field. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> They've given Rollins a gift hit. Huh? <laughs> yeah. J-Roll will take it, an infield single, and the Phillies have two men on base. That's very fair to Jose Rijo. Oh. I might put that one in pencil. One strike to Bobby Abreu. Two quick strikes to Abreu. Big weekend, the last weekend here at Synergy Field. The Phillies have not been very kind to Cincinnati, but Cincinnati's been a very nice host to the Phillies. 0 oh, 2 to Abreu, who's batting at 3.07. High ball into left field. Reggie Taylor is there. Abreu is retired, one down. Travis Lee. Eight 
starts for Rio this season. ERA just under six. Last start was back the first of June. It's 21 games out of the bullpen. Lambo getting a pretty good lead, and Rio looks him back. Chance to see a couple of former fields here today. Jeff Brantley, Cowboy was here, brought back by Cincinnati, and Danny Jackson. Life Jody here. here. Yeah. Kids. All back, no balls and two strikes. thing DJ said when he walked in the clubhouse downstairs was do I need to go in there and pump him up. Travis <laughs> <laughs> not happy with the call by Jeff Nelson but he is run up for out number two. A real throws mostly sliders and splits now a lot of sliders but here he throws a fastball and He's been getting his fastball up to 90. He's been as high as 91. Even after that long layoff and the five elbow surgeries. Mm, it was too close a pitch to take. Two outs with two men on base for Placido Polanco. Placido hitting at 290. Line drive to right field. Snared by Jose Guillen and I will retire to side. So Rio survives the misplay. No runs, two hits, no errors, two left after one half fills nothing. Reds coming to bat. Score at the top of the first. Cincinnati batting in the bottom half. Bob Boone starting lineup for the Reds. Todd Walker second base leads off. Jose Guillen right field bat second. Ken Griffey Jr. center field hitting third. Adam Dunn first base bats fourth. Aaron Boone at third base hitting fifth. Barry Larkin the shortstop bat sixth. Reggie Taylor left field hitting seventh. Kelly Stinnett will catch and bat eighth. And Jose Rio the pitcher hitting ninth. They are facing 26 year old Brandon Duckworth. Brandon Duckworth just trying to get it back on track. Here at the end of the season, 27 starts, a 6 and 9 record. It's been a struggle for him. Try to hit an inning a little more. 150 strikes, 56 strikeouts, more than a strikeout an inning. The one thing you have to look at and go, well, the, the stuff is still there. And it's basically just a, man, a matter of command, concentration, location. Last two starts has not fared well. Nine innings, 15 earned runs, and three home runs. Todd Walker, the first one to face him, hitting a 3-0-1. One strike to Walker. That's his 39th double of the year. Brandon Duckworth tries to come inside with the fastball, and you see Johnny Estrada reach outside, and that pretty much typifies what has happened to Brandon Duckworth this year. Just his location has not been there. Brings on Jose Gee in the right fielder, who's hitting a 240, tries to bump the runner along, but bunting foul, one strike to Gee. Day here in the Queen City after the rain out on Friday night. Sold out house here at Synergy Field for the final game to be played here. Blocked by a 
Stratum. One ball and one strike. Big crowd on hand here for the ceremonies. It'll come along after the game. are here for those ceremonies. Good synergy by field. <laughs> Just fouled on the first base side as Gian tries to move the runner up. One ball and two strikes. That Estrella of Wilmington, Delaware will be celebrating his 78th birthday tomorrow. So we're not on the air tomorrow, which is from Ruth and from us to Gladys Trella in Wilmington. Day tomorrow and back of the bet Tuesday night against those Atlanta Braves. Vicente Padilla and Tom Glavin Tuesday night. Well, one good thing about Glavin going tomorrow night is we won't have to see him again the rest of the year. Been tough on the Phillies. Is he simulating a game tomorrow night? Tuesday or Tuesday. Neither of these teams have hit particularly well with runners in scoring position. Two lowest in the National League. After Pittsburgh. Two balls and two strikes. and a high hardwood. Where it might have been looking at Randy Wolf. Wolf got so many strikeouts yesterday on high fastballs that Cincinnati went after. Randy Wolf got hurt on off-speed stuff early. And he started going to that high fastball right there and these guys really were chasing it. And Randy Wolf but talking to him after the game and I said, you know, did, your numbers don't bear it out, but it didn't look like you had real good command. He said, I had terrible command. He said he was warming up in the bullpen, and some guy was hollering at him saying, is that all you got? <laughs> and he, he didn't have the heart to tell him, yeah, but it was. Struck out a career high 13 yesterday. Here's Ken Griffey Jr. hitting at 279. No strikes to Junior, who's in eight home runs, knocked in 23. He's only played in 66 games with hamstring string muscle pulls and longer set muscle pulls. He's been shelled for most of the season. Pretty Two much balls and no strikes. Have to say, after that big contract he signed to come back to Cincinnati, has been pretty much a bust. Not that he doesn't have the talent, he just hadn't been out there that much. Second base with one out here in the bottom of the first. Powering drive to deep center field, but Glanville has a beat on it, makes the catch right in front of the fence. Walker moves to third. 
Suggs can't pick up the ball, and Walker's going to score. One to nothing, Cincinnati. That ball had a little Vaseline on it. Jimmy Rollins had it squirt out of his hand twice, not just close to him, but tried to pick it up twice, and the ball was nowhere near him. And they're kind of short up, and then he doesn't see it. Walker doesn't go, then he goes to pick it up and kicks it behind him. And then Walker does go, and Jimmy Rollins' quick throw to the plate is offline. So will be an error, I assume, on Jimmy Rollins. E6. Adam Dunn hitting a 252. One ball and one strike to Dunn. Dunn walks a lot, strikes out a lot. He's third in the league in getting walks, second in the league in striking out. One ball and two strikes. Cincinnati won, the Bills nothing. He won nothing, second inning, and Ricky Lede will lead off for the Phillies. They playing left field today. Pat Burrow being giving a day off after playing almost all the games this year. Ricky Lede hitting a 220. One ball and one strike. center and Todd Walker goes out to put it away. Lede has retired one down. Well, days to remember at Riverfront Stadium slash Synergy Field. They had two All-Star games here in 70 and 88. 30 postseason games. Four no-hitters, one perfect game. That was the one thrown by Tom Browning. Hank Aaron hit his 714th home run here, and of course, Pete Rose, the all time baseball's all time hit man, got his 4,192nd hit. Throughout the telecast, we'll be seeing some of those historic moments from this stadium. Lots of memories from this ballpark. They'll be in there. Brand new stadium, the Great American Ballpark, just outside the and center field fences here. It's up. That's where they'll be playing next year. Nothing and two to Marlon Anderson. One ball and two strikes. the Phillies third hit off Rio. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority. The Phillies may not be reproduced nor retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Phillies. Switch hitting Johnny Estrada two for eight since his call up. He hit 279 for the Scranton Wilkes-Barre Red Barons. Evan Homers, 1967. Blocked by Kelly Stanett. Keeping Marlin at first base. Nice play by Stanett behind the plate. Got a 
go back behind Johnny and keep this ball in front of him. One ball and no strikes to Estrada. Off the down and then breaking ball two and nothing. Anna Rudeski of Wilkesbury celebrating a 92nd birthday. Loyal Phillies fan wishes from her family and from us to Anna Rudeski. Season tickets are very, very important right now. That's because purchasing a full or partial season ticket plan for the 2003 season guarantees you a spot at the new ballpark in 2004. You'll have better views of the action, great amenities. For information on season tickets for next season, put yourself in line for the new ballpark. Call 215-463-5000. One strike to Duckworth, who's hitting a 195. He's a good hitting pitcher overall. His numbers, lifetime numbers, are over the Mendoza line at 206. 46th anniversary wishes today to Dan and Marianne Creedon of North Wildwood, New Jersey. Dan and Marianne were Billy Spring training in Clearwater, celebrating their 46th anniversary. Two to Brandon Duckworth. Base hit right field. Marlon Anderson robbing third. Here's the throw. Boy, that Ian has a cannon, but just a little up the line coming into score is Marlon Anderson. Jose Guillen throw or what? He has got some kind of arm out there. Marlin didn't get a great secondary lead, but as soon as Duckworth made contact, he was off and running. Fastball away from him. Duckworth just slaps it that way into right. He hits it pretty good. Guillen came in on it hard, and look at his throw. This doesn't bounce. This is on a line. So Duckworth helps himself, knocking in a tying run. It'll bring up Doug Glanville. He singled his first time up. One strike to Glanville. Second tied at one. Second one one ball game. Aaron Boone will lead it off for Cincinnati. Rose. Here in the Rose. In the middle of the Reds logo right behind home plate. Very symbolic. First game played here was June 30th, 1970. The Cincinnati Reds and the Atlanta Braves in then Riverfront Stadium. Big ceremonies and first hit for Cincinnati was off the bat of who else? Pete Rose. And Rose also knocked in a run in that game. It's not a good opening for the Reds, though. They lost to those Atlanta Braves. hit RBI it was Aaron Boone hitting a 
26, 24 homers. He has knocked in 84. One strike to Boone. Had a pretty good year for Cincinnati. 24 home runs, 84 RBIs. Average down a little bit, 236. It's also stolen 28 bases. Fly ball center field. Blaine Bell drifts to it. Abreu is also there. Bobby Abreu makes the play. Boone's retired. One down. Our Pico Energy Power Ranking shows Sammy Sosa top the National League with 48 homers. Barry Bonds next with 44. The American League A Rod Alex Rodriguez 56 of them. Jim Tomey has 47. Here's the 11-time All-Star Barry Larkin hitting at 242. Strike to Larkin. Boa had to use the bullpen a lot yesterday in the two extra inning games here. Duckworth can give him innings here this afternoon. The only two guys he didn't use in that day night doubleheader is Eric Young and Jose Santiago. Duckworth throws this fastball in on Larkin, running in on his hands. Tries to hold up. Going up. Miss the outside corner. Two balls and two strikes. One one game here in the bottom half of the second inning. Just missing a full count. It's one thing Brandon Duckworth has been running deep counts for most of the year. He gets ahead. He will put him away. He nibbles and misses. Drive into deep left field. Ricky Lede back at the track puts it away. That's two down, and that'll bring up Reggie Taylor. Well, the final series of the season at Veterans Stadium will be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday against Chipper and Andrew Jones and company. The Braves are in. All of them at 7:05. Order your tickets for the Braves series by calling 215. 463-1000 online at phillies.com or at the Center City Ticket Office at the Pennsylvania Convention Center. Here's Reggie Taylor hitting a 262. Phillies first round draft pick in the 95 draft. 25-year-old. Those dealt him at the end of spring training to Cincinnati in the Hector Mercado deal. to Reggie Taylor. Reggie had a big two out hit late in the game yesterday. Lead off an inning, but Cincinnati was not able to get him around. Second strikeout for Duckworth. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. And at the end of two, it's the Phils one and Cincinnati one. Stump the fans trivia question. Log on to Phillies.com. If you're the first to correctly answer, you'll win two tickets to a Phillies game. Please submit your answer in the subject area. You must leave your name and address to receive your prize. Today's question, what is the Phillies' all-time record at Riverfront Synergy Field? The answer and winner will be revealed in the seventh inning. One game, we're in the third inning. Jimmy Rollins leads off for the Phils. Annie Jackson has joined us here at Synergy Field. DJ of the 93 National League champion Phillies. Here also for the closing ceremonies of this ballpark. Next year, the Phils will be closing Veterans Stadium. It's a part of the celebration of last year at the Vet. We're going to have that 93 team back. So, city of brotherly love, get ready. <laughs> 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 
Two balls and no strikes to Jimmy Rollins. Here's DJ. DJ, how many years did you pitch for the Reds? I pitched three years for the Reds, and we won a World Series here, so Red was good to me. I had a couple of all-star, uh, well, all-star parents here, and then I had all-star parents over there in Philly, so uh, I loved Red. I noticed Jody, I asked her when she was up in the booth, I said, is that Philly Red or Cincinnati Red? She says, kind of both. And then when you said those things that happened to you with those two clubs, it makes sense. Well, it was a lot of fun, I tell you what. And uh, after I sit here for a while, Larry, you're going to have to pump me up, too. <laughs> Just looking to see if you had, still had your buttons on that shirt. There's no rips on it. No, no rips. <laughs> I didn't yet. have any buttons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, they got tired of sewing up my buttons, so they Velcroed everything for me. <laughs> Full count to J Roll. It's pretty well hitting the gap in right center field, and this ball is off the fence. Jimmy Rollins will get two on it. A stand-up double for Rollins. Well, he's fifth hit off Jose Rio. J. Roll trying to make up for that little blunder back in the first inning. He got something up in the zone, drops the head on it, hits it a long ways. The way Griffey was going after it, that he thought it was going out. Plays it nicely off the bottom of the wall. J. Roll with the double. Bobby Abreu flat out to left his first time up. Strike to Abreu. So what are you doing back in uh, Kansas City now? You've got a recreation center? I've got a family entertainment center, a 40-lane bowling center, and Mitch Williams has no chance of bowling against me. <laughs> um, then I've got uh, an indoor miniature golf, 18 holes, and uh, it's doing very well out there right now. Said right field to Bray. Here comes J. Roll. Keehan won't even try to throw the speedy Rollins out. And the Phillies take a two to one lead. Bobby Abreu knocks in his 83rd. You stay pretty busy at the bowling alley? Yeah, we stay busy out there, Larry. We have a, a real good time out there. We do a lot of banquets and birthday parties and things like that. But uh, just like anything else, you have your headaches, you know. Uh, just like us out well, there on the mound, we got a headache after they rope us around a little bit every once in a while. But then you have your good days. And uh, Harry, congratulations on your Hall of Fun. Thank you. Uh, really, Thank that's you, deserving. And uh, I, I love listening to you. I still listen to you on uh, Monday night. To, or, the uh, HBO uh, replays and it's awesome. The NFL. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> One strike to Travis Lee. You get out to many games, or you, does your business keep you pretty well occupied? Well, it keeps me occupied, but I can't stand watching an American League game <laughs> for one. <laughs> um, and it, the Royals pitching, you know, just so so bad right now that it, it's it's to get out there and, and, and watch it and uh, frankly my kids too after all the years that I've played in the major leagues they can't get out really to go out and then Jody sure isn't going to go out and you know that Larry <laughs> the boys are not going out to the ball game <laughs> well your boys are big yeah Brandon got real big on me he's only 6'4 six, and 16 years old and 225 pounds and wow. 16 and a half shoe. Does he play baseball? Really? Yeah, he's playing baseball this year and uh, uh, he's been working out and he didn't start working out until he got his girlfriend. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to keep working out just to keep him in line. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm trying to. <laughs> but it's too hard to get... Uh, Catch up, you know what? I can outrun him still, even with my That's bad ankle. <laughs> <laughs> I think a two to Travis Lee. There goes Bobby Abreu. Got a big jump, and the throw soars over the bag at second base. Stolen base Abreu. Well, Bobby, that's his 28th stolen base of the year. Boy, a big jump off of Rio, and at least Stinnett had no chance there. He comes up. I don't know. Even that throw is on the bag. I don't think they're going to get him. Pop up. Second baseman Todd Walker waits. And makes the play. Four out number one. He'll bring on Placido Polanco lined out to right. Very 
is still at second base with one out. Wouldn't have got that kind of jump on you, DJ. No, I don't know. Late in my career, he made it, but uh, <laughs> not when I was with the Phillies. Uh, and this is what's so great about being here today, because I'm here with both teams that I went to World Series with and playoffs with, and the chemistry on both teams were the same, except for uh, when our Phillies guys, we were nuts, and, and, and we had a great time there. But uh, we had a good time here in Cincinnati, too, when I was here, and I look forward to next year. Tommy uh, Ball is second. Walker throws out Polanco. Three club coming back in 2003 to Veterans Stadium. The last year of the bat, that'll be a lot of fun. It will be a lot of fun because I'm having a good time here. Get to see the guys uh, that we played with and all the fun that we have. Reminisce all the times that we had and uh, you know some of the old war stories. You know those are what the fun things are. Jason probably hadn't been around since you retired, has he? No, Jason kind of retired too. <laughs> <laughs> coming out and I guess he talked to you right yes he did Line drive but it's foul about that 93 team amazing stories probably coming out in that book oh yeah There's some we can't tell <laughs> Fred's got their bullpen up Brian Moeller right hander up in the pen Two strikes to Ricky Lede. Abreu with third, two outs, a run in. Two and two. What's your best memory here at uh, Riverfront Synergy Field? My my best memory here one is uh, uh, the World Series, but also watching Tom Browning in 1988. He was struggling a little bit. They hit away from Ricky Lede. We'll get back to that story in the bottom half. Fine play by Todd Walker. Phils take the lead with a run. Two hits, no errors, and one left. We move to the bottom half of the third inning here at Synergy Field. It's the Phillies two and the Cincinnati Reds one. Jackson of the 93 club has joined us. Also a member of the Cincinnati Reds here for the closing of this ballpark. And DJ, you were mentioning your fondest memory here at Riverfront slash Synergy. Yeah, and that was Tom Browning going out there in 88. He was struggling a little bit and threw a perfect game, and it was unbelievable to, to see that happen. And because uh, obviously you're never going to see it happen most of the time in your career, but uh, that was amazing in, in that. Um, also, you know, just us going out here and, and, and winning the. Series, but also the playoffs. I came out here in game six and, and threw a one hitter for six inning, and then I turned it over to the Nasty Boys, and it was over. Uh, so we ended up winning in uh, six games against Pittsburgh. So that's a fond memory for me in this part. Kelly Stanat lands one into right field. It's going to drop for a hit. The Reds catcher is the leadoff base runner with a second hit given up by Brandon Duckworth. Another remembrance of Riverfront Stadium here in the Queen City. But Danny Jackson was just talking about Tom Browning gets the final out in a perfect game in 1988. It was some game. Did you see him? Is he here? Yeah, Tommy's here, and uh, you know, all the uh, 1990 guys are up there, and the Big Red Machine, a bunch of those guys are up there, and uh, we we just had a blast out here so far, and that's why I look forward to next year with the Phillies and all our guys out there because we were crazy. <laughs> Jose Rijo successfully sacrifices. It goes Estrada to Travis Lee, moving Stanett to second base. Up Todd Walker. I think for the Phillies winning the National League pennant 93, the key to beating the Braves was a game you pitched down at Fulton County Stadium, two to one game. You drove in 
the tying run and scored the winning run or no I drove in the winning run he drove in the winning yeah run. you got to get that straight now That's you know yeah that that was a good good year that year too because I think that was a, the year I drove in five RBIs in Montreal with my double and my triple <laughs> ran through Larry Boa's sign over at second base and went into third he looked at me and said, what are you doing I said I don't know I'm just trying to first triple <laughs> <laughs> Two balls and no strikes to Todd Walker. He doubled his first time up. Bills lead 2-1. Two balls and a strike to Walker. E.J., you've come close to pitching a no-hitter, have you not? Yeah, I came close uh, back in Kansas City and a couple other times, uh, taking them to seventh, eighth inning. And uh, it's hard. I tell you what, you, know, you start getting a little jittery out there. You think about it, and uh, it's 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 a great feat when you can do it. Well, Anderson throws out Walker on the play. The net moves up to third base, and with two outs, it'll bring up Jose again. What's so special about it here is that uh, even if you make a good pitch because of these guys being so good at the bat and they hit it they can hit a good pitch on you and for a base hit and uh, you know, so you got to be a little lucky uh, when you're pitching out there to get that no hitter let alone a perfect game I, you know, I just can't imagine a perfect game but uh, the no hitter came close and it was a lot of fun. You had to name one hitter it was the toughest for you in your career who would it be. Excluding me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, the one that was really tough for me was, was Tony Gwynn. And then, you know, but then Jeff Blauser crushed me too. I mean, that guy just owned me for whatever reason. In the center field, Glanville coming hard, makes the running catch, and that will retire the side. Danny Jackson, we appreciate your stopping by to chat with us. Best to you. Great All right, to thank see you, Harry. Good luck to you. Thank you. Congratulations. Great to see you, Dean. All right, Larry. All runs, one hit, no errors, one left. Chris Wheeler joins Larry Anderson, the fourth after three, two, one, fills. Jose Mesa is available today. But he's about it. I think he'll be available every day. <laughs> Bo said he can use him today. He can't use Adams. He can't use Timlin. He can't use Silva. At least he doesn't think so. Can't using him and not using him are two different things. That's why I qualified that. <laughs> <laughs> In the heat of battle, who knows, Andy, right? But that's what he told me before the game, and he's on the record. Anderson one for one with a single and a run scored, and he swings and misses. Jose Rio. Surgery. He's one of the most popular guys to ever play here in Cincinnati and getting the start in the final game of this great old ballpark by the river. Synergy field. A lot of history here. There's the Ohio River out there past the new ballpark. When you think about this place, how there was an upper deck all the way around here for so long, and then they had to knock it down. Took out about 11,000 seats. There you see where the upper deck ends, the new ballpark begins, and then as you get towards third base, the upper deck starts up again. Fouled away by Marlin down that way. Amazing how they took that whole section out from center over the left field line and yeah. set that new ballpark in there. Did it during an offseason. I remember when they were writing about that in the papers out here, the architecture and how they had it planned and what they're going to do. He went, what? you got to be kidding. Marlon pops that one up foul down the first baseline. It will go out of play. And the sun's back out again. They have all kinds of fronts running through here today. One minute it's sunny, then it's cloudy, sunny, cloudy, and now it's beautiful again. Very pleasant day in Cincinnati. 
known to the natives as the Queen City. Pitch on the way to Marlin. And they've been calling that high strike and also away to the left handed batter, says Jeff Nelson. Anderson didn't like it. He's gone, one out. It is time now for today's Citizens Bank, not your typical fan. Each game will scan the crowd, find a fan or fans who set themselves apart from the rest. <laughs> I think he's got his glasses on back. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, they could find him out there for us, I'll tell you. Johnny Estrada getting a start today. Tap back to Rio his first time up. Johnny's second start since being recalled from AAA, where he caught 112 games as a starting player this year. Lying right at Aaron Boone, a little pump back liner, two outs. And nobody on base for Brandon Duckworth. Fantasy Camp. Live your Major League Fantasy. Join the guys like Larry Anderson, John Kruk, Mitch Williams, Dallas Green, Greg Luzinski, and many others. The ultimate baseball trip, January 29th, February 2nd in Clearwater. Great accommodations, your own Phil's uniform, top-notch instruction, and lots of fun. That's an authentic Phil's uniform. You must be 30 years of age or older. Just call 610-520-3400. That's 610-520-3400. Send your brochure, tell you all about it. Duckworth, who rarely strikes out, put the ball in play at last time. Up a line drive, single to right, and knocked in his fourth run of the year. Tied the game at one. Phillies have since gone on top, two to one, as Jose Rio pitches into the fourth inning. Two outs and nobody on base. Outside one and two. tries to keep him off stride and fool. It used to be he used to overpower people. Of course, that was five arm surgeries ago. Missed away two and two. It's amazing. Now he's throwing fastball 90, 91, 92 once in a while after all those surgeries. Stovall in the Dominican Republic. Which of course means St. Christopher. Right. He knew that. Fouled away, still two and two as Duckworth's giving him a good at bat. Two to one. It's a great day after a horrendous Friday night. Yesterday and today have been beautiful. They've been changing the bases every inning. <laughs> Adam, Dun Adam Dunn's been helping out. Special logos on them commemorating the last game here, Riverfront Synergy. You do a lot with those bags, probably for charities, all kinds of things you can do. This is that day where you just want to make sure you're trying to do everything right. They will remove home plate. There's Dunn who's going to lead or be second up in the inning. They're going to remove home plate after the game and take it over to the new ballpark. Phillies have so there's the logo on the bases. Phillies have some of their brass here to see how their closing ceremonies are handled and what they do and getting ideas. Chrissy Lego Long, Sharon Swainson, Dave Montgomery, Larry Shank. Junior will lead it off. He fly to deep center field his first time up. Duckworth 
first pitch on the way is up high ball one will be Griffey Dunn and Boone here in the fourth inning. into the sun and Pasito puts it away one out. So the all time leaders here at Riverfront Synergy Dave Concepcion in games and hits Johnny Bench who's right down from us home runs 154 Tom Browning we talked about him in his perfect game with 63 wins and John Franco with 90 saves. You think of Franco being with the Mets and all yeah. those successful years, you forget all the great years he had here. And the great JB, as Andy mentioned, is down right off to our left with George Grant and Chris Welsh on the red telecast. Johnny Bench, who really revolutionized that position. Strike to Dunn. He says 63 wins, you think, you know, in the history of this ballpark. He's 22 years old, 32 years old. 62 wins, or 63 just. Doesn't seem like a lot. Well, it's not a lot. No. Well, you know, Dunn hits it deep to center. Glanville looks up and it hits off the wall. And Dunn will have a stand up double. I think the thing about the Reds, they really never had a, you know, you think about great dominating pitchers. They've had good pitching, but never a guy that really jumped out at you. Big Red Machine was more offense. And solid starters. Solid starters. Early 90s was the bullpen, the nasty boys. Right. You think about the, the, the big red machine. They had guys like Bellingham and, and uh, Gullet. Gullet, Clay Carroll, Clay Carroll yeah. Zachary, all workmen like good pitchers. Pedro Bourbon was more of a reliever, right? Yep. And they had the, you know, they had a good bullpen too, and Raleigh Eastwick, guys like that. South Jersey guy, Raleigh had tremendous years here. So I mean they didn't have a Carlton. Even Seaver pitched here for a while, but he was about the end of his career, even though he pitched a no-hitter. Aaron Boone flied out his first time up, moved back to second, and done back in plenty of time. Done with his 27th double of the year. There's some of those retired numbers. Fred Hutchinson was a tremendous manager. Johnny Bench, Joe Morgan. Clue, big Ted Kluzewski. Well, I remember him when I was a kid watching him play. Pop foul out of play. One of those cut off sleeves with those huge arms. Now the manager of the Cincinnati Reds. I read somewhere the other day they expect to extend him. But he's managed two teams now, Kansas City and now Cincinnati. 0-2 to his son Aaron. Up the middle and it's through for a base hit. Time will be waved around and we got a tie game as Duckworth made a big mistake there. 0-2 got the ball up. And Aaron Boone knocks in his 85th run of the year. It's 2-2. hit back fairly hard but it looked like Duckworth trying to get out of the way of it. Fastball right up the middle. I guess it was hit too hard by him. It was already to his backside as he follows through. Maybe he's trying to get his leg in there. He's not happy about it. It's not a good 0-2 pitch. No. So a double and a single with one out here in the fourth inning, a 2-2 ball game. Hit number four off Duckworth as Fern Rule looks on from the Phil's third base dugout along with John Vukovic. Deep his first time up, just got it off the end of the bat a little bit. Parkman still has another year remaining on a huge contract that he signed, so expect him to be back with the Reds next year. It's certainly not a contract that some other team's going to take off their hands. And Duckworth misses high with that one, 2 0. 
can land. That's out in right center. to the plate. Johnny makes a nice throw there, but that throw could have been right on the bag. They wouldn't have had it. And meanwhile, the count now two and one on Larkin with Aaron Boone in scoring position. Getting a good walking lead. Struck, whoop, a little low. Three and one. Oh, Johnny moved his club there. Nelson's more calling the high pitch than the low pitch today. That's been his pattern. And Larkin fouls that one back as he got in on him a little bit. Nice catch by a lady. Fan right there by the screen. Gets a kiss from Hubby. That was a terrific play right near the on deck circle of the Reds. <laughs> Barry Larkin's career numbers. Almost 2,000 games. Two RBIs away from 900. Yeah, they'd like him not to get one of those here. And he won't. He gets jammed on that. A fly ball to shallow right field. Bobby Abreu there. Makes the play. Aaron Boone fakes going to third. And there are two outs. Reds play very well couple months of the season they were right there in it and 16 games under since the start of June ERA big difference there Reggie Taylor struck out his first time up the former Phil traded for Hector Mercado right at the end of spring training Reggie was out of options that the Phillies necessarily wanted to get rid of him, but just a, one of those numbers things. And Reggie's done fine here this year. He's had a pretty good season. Especially come on a little bit since the middle of July. Possesses tremendous tools. And Duckworth and Estrada take a little time to get going. strike to Reggie. One ball and one strike on the former Phil's number one pick. 2-2 two -two ball game here in the fourth inning. Well, the Phillies actually, I think, were pretty patient with Reggie Taylor. They, they gave him a lot of time and let him work his way through the minor leagues. Popped him up. Playable. Shortstop Jimmy Rollins is right there. He puts it away and that'll end the inning. A run on two hits. No and one man left on base through four. They're changing the bags again. It's 2-2. Two -two. Top of the fifth inning, top of the order. Doug Glanville will lead it off. Jimmy Rollins to follow, and Bobby Abreu, slider from Rio, misses outside. Oh, you guys don't stand. I see that. <laughs> nice going, Andy. Boy, what a treat this is. Johnny oh, listen to you, Chris. Thanks nice very much. You. Yeah. An outfielder out there for that one. That's what I love about good TV. You know, you just let the picture so let it do it. Huh? Yeah. yeah. You can get it wrong, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. can wait long enough. Yeah. You know, he says hit it off the end of the bat. Now, before he said, that might be. Holy cow. You know? <laughs> hey, it was fun watching you and Sparky out there with the first ball. Oh, I said, have you warmed up at all? <laughs> I said, I'm not wearing a cup, man. I said, don't be scouting <laughs> that stuff up there. And he said, I said, I don't have any protection. I'm not, I'm not taking any in the dirt. <laughs> Is that he's, he's clinically insane, so well, it's all right. I mean, yeah, but and he wasn't even a pitcher like some no. of the people in this room, <laughs> like the guy on your right. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm still, I'm still telling. I actually want to find out where he has that can of paint that he did on his head that day because I was, well, I was wanting to do that so badly. 
you know, it's good for the chicks in the commercial, you know. <laughs> he throw you a few sliders? Uh, I was too, uh, he's too young to have pitched against me very much. He didn't have to do that. How about Jose cruising along here, huh? Look at that. Let's let's get the speed on that one. 89 miles an hour. After five operations. Yeah, you could feel the wind. This is it. I'm telling you, you just got to stay around long enough to collect your pension. I mean, you got to be thinking about come back at this point. I tell you what. Who was it? The uh, kid Chris Hammond in uh, Atlanta has yeah. pitched in a number of years. He's got ERA of one. I tell you, everybody wants to just go ahead and take that ligament out and put a new one in and go out. It's the best thing. Everybody that comes back from it throws harder than they did before. Yeah. How's uh, I talked to Larry. Larry said, uh, you know, he's he's nuts. He's crazy. They're driving me nuts and everything else. I said, well, that's why. That's why uh, Tori, you know, look at that call strike. Let's let's move this thing along. Get this thing imploded, <laughs> man. This is way out there where you need it. You better be up there swinging is what you're going to do. 389 home runs. Hey, I was here for uh, 16 years, and of course, one of them may have been this one right here. Ooh, look at that. You see, that's extension. Oh, I wish I could do that with a golf ball now. I'd give anything. <laughs> I'd give anything. Look at the bull. He's going to take the wall completely out. This is actually to go hey, nice, it. nice segue, boys. I hit this against the Phillies, and Willie Stargell's running in with me. <laughs> We were, we say we cut right to the All-Star game, 1971. So you're not supposed to pick up on that. I hate watching movies where they really don't edit properly. Hey, let's, uh, <laughs> I, I got to ask you, because I've seen it so many times. You hit a home run, your last at bat here. Yes. Right? No, no, in my, in my game. Your last game? Yeah. What was that like? It was phenomenal. I mean, 55,000 people showed up. I hit a home run, and I don't think there was a dry in the house. And the one person was, was Joe Nuxall making the call tears in his eyes and it was just the one day where you played I played baseball and I was the only person that it meant anything wasn't yeah. a team or anything else it was really it was the greatest last at bat I got a base hit uh, with the bases loaded against the Giants and uh, I said that's it boys <laughs> I'm not going back up there they said well we got to go to Houston I said you can go to Houston I'll go to Houston but I have not taken any wood off that pine <laughs> the brave fouls it away Will go out of play behind the Phillies. Got to be fun. Bray has oh, had a okay. pretty good month this week. Yeah. This, these two days, hasn't he? Real good. Six for ten yesterday in the day night doubleheader. You brought up your golf game. Yeah, I'm on the back nine. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm dormy right now. I think I think I've reached enough holes where I just I'm dormy. I have to win the rest of the holes to keep playing. I'm out, not sure it's like that. Are you out of that players thing? The road. We do that. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's the road and invitational. I mean you know it's a charity. Yeah. Let's just raise some money for the road. But although Shane Raleigh's playing well, uh, Danny Quinn, all the guys, we have a great time and we do a lot of money, raise a lot of money for charities. But it's uh, you know this is baseball. This is what I wish the atmosphere. It seems like the old days when the Dodgers were in town, you guys would come in town. I mean the Phillies would be here. That's what's amazing. And I, tell, I told Larry, I said nobody knew how really great the Phillies were. Another base hit. Gee. He's two for two today. What's his They're average up to now? Well, he came in at 307. He's two for three. That'll work. That'll work. I mean, pretty simple uh, what it is. And this is Sparky warming up. And look at this. He's going to do the lob. I don't have the cup right <laughs> out of the way. They're booing me. As, you know, why not? I feel like you had to feel like you were in Philadelphia at this point. Didn't you? <laughs> now I'm going to scoot up. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Now he's going to give me the... <laughs> now he's quitting. He said he can't get it up that high, high anymore. He said he got on top twice. I said throw Anderson slider. Just drop down on the three quarters and just bring it on around there. Travis Lee takes his strike for Brigham. Where is Harry Callis? Uh, yeah, he's over there in the booth and doing the game. Get some of these announcements. Hall of yeah, Famer, you know. Yeah. Harry Carey did it pretty good. You know, Harry. Harry, I did it. I was doing the game up there. I said, you know, John, you do me better than I do. <laughs> I said, I can't understand it. Here's, here's Lee. Hadn't had a hit in a week or an RBI in a month, and they're booing the guy. I don't understand what's going on. Yeah, that is good. There he goes. Bobby Abreu got a good hey, He's job. got no chance of throwing him out. Hey, see, what was Real thinking about? He was a brotherhood deal with a Latin going on here? <laughs> this guy must have needed a stolen base for number 30 or something, the way. Yeah, Harry never stirred up, would he? Yeah. Well, that was off Real, no question. Bobby, a great jump right there. No chance again for Stanette. That's the old. Did that drive you nuts? Oh, that's a, that was the old, let's just concentrate on the hitter. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, I can throw that guy out. I know I can <laughs> throw that guy out. Don't give me that big leg kit. I think he's tired and he's got to just take a little longer to get it there. 
nice little slider over the top. There's a lot of them. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. He's, but he has. He's had so many surgeries and everything else. He's fought back. It's a pretty good story, but it's a nice little story that he started in the last game here. Two balls and two. So he got some hand today when he was introduced. Yeah. Yeah, you know, a lot of people like successor. I mean, they like the fact that somebody's willing to spend that much time in struggle and make three million a year working out. It's a hell of a deal. Overthrew that one a little bit. Three and two. I did. It's not a no, bad game. No, you didn't. He did. No, you never overthrew. <laughs> oh, well, what We the saw heck? enough of that from you. Oh, bye-bye. That's on the wall anyway. Come on. We got an outfielder? No. No, that's over Gian's head for a ground rule double. Phillies will take the lead. Three to two on Travis Lee's 67th run battle of the year. There you go. 67 big ones. I should jump him up to the 10 million a year. I got to ask you. Got enough money. I got to ask you before you get out of here. Yeah. The way you used to hit Steve Carl. I, you know, I never understood it. I just never. Every time he got to the top of his delivery, I knew what it was. I don't know what, and you know, I don't know what's going to happen. But uh, got a double switch here. As Daw Dawkins will actually come in to probably play shortstop. Larkin uh, will probably be taken out. Johnny Bench Somebody going back to his old broadcaster days. Yeah, and I'm going back down to the dugout. We got to go down. We got to. Thanks, Jerry. Good to see you, too. And thank you very much. Good to see you. Thanks, Johnny Bench, a great Hall of Famer, and here goes Rio out of the ball game to a standing ovation. great moment that was both Barry Larkin and Jose Rio leave on a double switch and what an incredible ovation Gookie Dawkins comes in play shortstop he will bat ninth so uh, pitcher is right hander Brian Mole. it was nice the way that uh, Bob Boone did it too to get Larkin off to come off the field you know in a double switch and it's almost like it was planned that way so the fans could appreciate him instead of in between innings and they never come back out. That's great. I mean like taking a guy out of a game late like that so we can run off the field. There's Brian Muller the former Tiger came over here in a deal and he has been in eight games coming into game number nine. That's his record and he's been hit around really not done anything close to what they hoped he would do. This is his first relief appearance at the major league level after 139 starts. That was some situation we had right there. Those two guys get out of the game. Johnny Bench walks out of here. This is some day. Really? <laughs> Here's Rio. It was fun having Bench up here with us after watching him kill the Phillies all those years. There's Rio's line and still responsible for a runner at second base, Travis Lee, who just broke the tie with that double. I had him saying that Lefty would get to the top of his delivery and he knew what he was going to throw. It looked like it, though. Yep. He hit him. Hit three home runs in a game one night at the vet. And I don't know that all three of them were off Lefty, but at least two were. Lee at second. Strike to Polanco is 0 for 2 today. He's lined out and grounded out. Get a little bit of an idea of what it's going to be like next year at Veterans Stadium about this time of year. Yeah. The Phillies are hoping to close the season, the official end of the baseball season. The Reds doing it a week before the season ends. As Polanco fouls that one off. They still have six games to play on the road. They go to Chicago and Montreal. One ball and two strikes. Moeller. Is 30 years of age out of Rockingham, North Carolina, makes his home now in Marietta, Georgia. Originally selected by the Tigers, sixth round of the June 93 draft. Down in the dirt, nice play by Stanett. He's 6'3, a 235 pounder.
just off the disabled list with inflammation of the rotator cuff. And he looks like he's pushing the ball a little bit out there. Yeah. Three and two. You go on a DL and you get that you got rotator cuff problems. When you come out, you, you know, he started a game against Pittsburgh last time out, but tendency to be a little tentative, I think, a little worried about it until you really know for sure that you're okay. Probably a little concern there. You're afraid you got to throw your arm out. This is his first appearance out of the bullpen ever. Yep. After 139 major league starts. And they're trying to find out whether he's healthy here at the end of the year. Three balls, two strikes on Polanco with two outs and a run in. Phillies with a one run lead. And there are his career numbers in 139 starts. And he walked them. No, Polanco was a little impatient his first two times up, especially for him. Made outs on two pitches. Draws a walk, and that will bring up Ricky Lede playing in left field. Don Gullett, speaking of great former Cincinnati Reds. And Johnny Bench made some battery. Stadium and some of the memories here. Rick Wise is no hitter. Pete Rose, a line drive. Guess who that guy is? Johnny Vukovic playing third base. Here comes Larry Boa. And then in the playoff game, Phillies had the lead, but then in the ninth inning, a high chopper by Griffey Sr. off Tommy Underwood to Bobby Tolan. And that was it as Dave Concepcion scored that winning run. Johnny Bench on his way out, and now officially they're down to zero games in this ballpark. Some kind of history here in this stadium. Yeah, I'll never forget that playoff game we just showed. Phillies had a two run lead in the ninth inning. Looked like they were going to live another day here in Cincinnati and play another game, but the Reds were not to be denied that year. Then they swept the Yankees in four straight. What a team that was. The uh, game was changed out there by Carl Linder, who's the CEO of this ball club since October 1st of 1999. Kelly Stinnett has a hit today. He's been swinging the bat great since he got healthy and had a chance to play starting Thursday in Pittsburgh. One for one in this game. Had a couple hits in a game yesterday. Grand slam the other night in Pittsburgh. Two strikes. Duckworth's pitch is popped up. Shallow left field. Who wants it? Jimmy Rollins, a long run. He's there, one out. Well, you see this beautiful ballpark going out there and the, being built out there in the outfit. You can't help about think about the Phil's new ballpark and how about full and partial 2003 season ticket packages. They will guarantee you a spot at the new ballpark in 2004. You'll enjoy great views of the action, exciting amenities designed to please every fan. So make that call right away. 215-463-5000 for all the details about season tickets. Final year at the vet. First year at the new ballpark. As Gookie Dawkins fouls one off just above us. This is his first at bat. And there are the numbers on Dawkins. He was at Louisville, second stint with the Reds. He has been a disappointment. They really thought they had something with this guy. And also Pokey Reese. You know, I mean, they remember back not that long ago, they thought with Pokey Reese and Gookie Dawkins, they had the makings of two pretty good young infielders. the lead again and the pitch is a breaking ball outside. One ball and two strikes. Dawkins in the nine hole, the double switch. 
means Todd Walker waits on deck. Breaking ball hammered down the line. Fair ball, extra bases. The day plays it off the wall, and Dawkins will have a stand-up double. So Duckworth made a bad pitch there. It looked like he hung a breaking ball to Dawkins, and he paid for it. Dawkins out in front of it, just pulls it right down the line. Falls up a little bit. Hit number five for the Reds, the second double of the year for Dawkins. 87 games in the minors this year at Louisville and Chattanooga. And Todd Walker, the batter, doubled and scored in the first inning. And grounded out in the third. Walker now with 39 doubles. Takes a fastball for a strike. Phillies have had the lead in this game twice. They've given it back once, trying not to do it again. Up in the pen. Lost game number two last night on the home run by Tomas Perez as Walker swings and misses. 0 and 2. Jose Guillen, a right handed batter on deck. Brandon Duckworth trying to get straightened out here and pitch well the rest of the year. Pitch himself into the plans for next season. Too. I mean, he's aware of the fact that he's going to have to go to spring training next year and win a job after this shaking second season that he's had. Last year, Larry Ball and the staff felt pretty good about him going into spring training. Alf, what he had done in his rookie year? Well, the thing about it goes back to just one season does not a career make. Well, they say, Andy, you know, it's, it's hard to get here. I mean, you don't want to poo poo that, but the hardest thing is to stay here. harder to stay here than it is to get here. One ball and two strikes now on Walker after Johnny Estrada went out to the mound to talk to Duckworth. The look to second and the pitch. Ooh, man, a wicked foul off the Reds dugout. Fielded nicely by Ron Koopa, the first base umpire. And Walker's teammates are going, what are you doing to us? There's Rio out of the game and he was diving for cover. Things about it. And the reason it's hard to stay here is because when, when you come up through the minor leagues, you change in leagues, you're seeing different pitchers. So, you know, they never, the hitters never get a chance to see it time and time and time and time again. When you get to the big leagues, you're facing the same guys, the same hitters for the most part, or a lot of them. Obviously, more accomplished hitters. And now they see your stuff, and it only takes them a couple times to see what you throw. And they know, and they'll look for, for uh, patterns you get into. They'll look for what you do in situations, what you like to throw. They get all so this, you have to be good. Yeah, they I mean, got all this computer stuff now that shows what you throw in every situation, where you throw it. It's amazing. Advanced scouts, Advanced. and that's what makes it tough to stay here. It is really tougher now. Two and two. I mean, you read those, some of those breakdowns that come out now, and they are so accurate, they're scary. Jose Cardinal fields that and tosses it to a fan. And we're slowing it up a little bit here in the fifth inning now that he's in trouble. You see the runner docking to second. One out, the 2 2 pitch to Walker. Struck Cam out on a foul tip, held on to by Johnny. Estrada, two outs. A good fastball there by Brandon Duckworth. This is something he got away from, I think, a little bit earlier in the year, the first half of the year. He's trying to do it more as his four seam fastball. It's 92, 91, 92, 93. Has a little movement on it, a little cut, a little giddy up on it. And he got away from that because he fell in love with that two seamer. Especially to left handers, then he started losing that two seamer a little bit and leaving it in the middle of the plate. And I 
that took a while to get back to throwing his four seam fastball, which he probably has better command of. He got Jose Guillen on a four seamer that was really high in the first inning, got him to chase it. Also, fly ball to center on a nice running catch by Doug Landville. Breaking ball misses, 1 0. Oh. One ball and no strikes to Jose Guillen batting out of the two hole. Junior Griffey waits on that. Dawkins at second now with two outs. Phillies with a one run lead. We're in the fifth. Fly ball. First base side. Lee in foul territory. Staggers around. What a terrific play by Travis Lee. Looking up into that sun and the wind and he bails Duckworth out of the inning. Good play by Lee. No runs a hit. No and one man left on base. Phil still lead it by one. First two lead three to two as we go to the seventh final game at Synergy Field. Brandon Duckworth giving the Phil six real solid innings today. And he's knocked in around. Bobby Abreu has had some series. Two more hits today. Travis Lee has the go-ahead double in this game. Jose Rio out after four and two-third innings. He's the pitcher of record. Todd Walker has a double, and he also scored on an error. And, Brett, and Aaron Boone has an RBI single and some signs around Synergy Field. The final game here today on a, just a gorgeous afternoon. Sellout crowd. Big post-game show today. And there's the new Great American Ballpark out there in the outfield, which will open in April of 2003. The new pitcher, the much-traveled Bruce Jan, who spent some time with the Phillies, coming into game number 54. His record at 2-5. and five. There are the numbers on him. Left-handed hitters, 259. Right-handed hitters, 292. Top of the order for the Phillies, Doug Glanville, Jimmy Rollins, Bobby Abreu here in the seventh inning. Phillies with a one-run lead. Third play-by-play. Here's Harry. First ball swinging, pops it up towards shortstop. Kuki Dawkins waits and puts it away. Pop-ups are an adventure here with this win this afternoon. One down, it'll bring on Jimmy Rollins. Bruce Jen, 25 years of age. From Panama City, Panama. is better than a strikeout per inning, but also gives up quite a few hits. J. Roll will turn around and bat right. He is two for three. He is single, doubled, and struck out. He has scored a run. One and nothing to Rollins. Six against Jen. It was a triple. Bills leading 3 2 here in the seventh inning. Two balls and a strike. Ball two and two the count. Gentlemen for Brian Moeller, who was lifted for the pinch hitter. Stadium Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. The pitching matchups Tuesday, Vicente Padilla against Tom Glavin.
Wednesday, Brett Myers and Damian Moss. Thursday, Joe Roa goes against Kevin Millwood. Final series of the VAT in 2002 season. Here's Bobby Abreu. Abreu is two for three, extending his hitting streak to 16 consecutive games. Strike. Cincinnati. Be followed by Gooky Dawkins and then the top of the order. Tom Walker here in the bottom half of the seventh. That was the Great American Ballpark, a new home for the Cincinnati Reds beginning next year. A lot of seats already in place be in their new home in 2003. It's the home bullpen area. Looking down the foul line. And that will be home plate. Great American ballpark. Opened in 2003. Kelly Stanett leads off. He is singled and popped up. He's been hot. He is nine for his last 18. It's really neat for uh, Cincinnati, but boy, it makes you think how great it's going to be for Philadelphia next year this time. Watch the Phillies' new ballpark go up for 2004 season. No strikes. Trying to get Duckworth through another inning. He threw, he had to throw a lot more pitches last inning than he should have after they didn't get that third out. And now uh, their bullpen is really strapped. And Larry Ball, he doesn't have a whole a lot of moves today. Out there. Two balls and a strike to Stanett. If he could get seven out of Duckworth, that would just be tremendous. Santiago, one of the few that has had sufficient rest to work in this game. Yeah, Eric, Eric Young, Young standing there, and also Joe Rowe was available out of the pen today if they'd had an early knockout. Ground ball, second base, Marlon Anderson takes care of Stanett. That's one down here in the seventh. And Jose Ria, or Jose. Uh, Mesa. Mesa is available, yeah, today, yeah, he, which is amazing. After saving both ends of the doubleheader yesterday, the day and night end of the doubleheader, I saw him in the trainer's room after the game. I said, Go for the record tomorrow? Yes, yes, of course I do. And he said, Larry Ball said the day before the game that he is available. 
I think Bo was even surprised that he said that. Here's Gooky Dawkins. He doubled in his only at bat. Towering fly ball left center field. Doug Glanville puts this one away. That's two down here in the seventh inning, and it will bring on Tom Walker. Walker has doubled and scored a run, grounded out, and struck out. Yeah, I know. 
double his last time up. Pops a foul out of play, one strike. He was struck out, popped up, and got the Phillies a 3-2 lead in the fifth inning. Last batter that Jose Rijo would face. Yet another slider. He was throwing tons of them. That ball's over the head of Guillen. Guillen's head for a ground rule. And you could hear Johnny Bench in the background saying we got somebody out there that can catch that, don't we? No, we don't. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> JB. Johnny stopped by for a little while. That was fun. Didn't it did an impression of you? No. Oh, yeah. And Harry Carey, they were good. <laughs> you remember about JB is he was probably the only hitter. Just born Steve Carl. I brought that up. He said, did you ask him if he knew what was coming? He said when he got to the top, when Lefty got to the top, he said, I knew what the pitch was. Wow. And then there was that double switch right then with all the ovations, and yeah. JB took a hike. <laughs> so that's all we got out of him wow. on that. Two and two the count to Travis Lee. Jenna's high with it. It's a full count. Jose Silva, who was in the game last night, second game. Lee draws a leadoff walk. They can bring on Placido Polanco, who was 0 for 2 with a walk. Polanco has Chen in his book. Lifetime, he's 2 for 7 off Bruce Chen, including a home run. Brandon Duckworth will be out of this game, you would think. And he did a great job today. 113 pitches. At only one of the runs earned, and he had a pitch out of a couple jams and did so, and he has to feel good about himself. Only walked one, struck out six. And the one that he walked, it almost looked like they pitched around Brandon to get to Reggie Taylor. chest and he kind of looked out at Chen who was who was saying that he had bunted out that kind of ticked Polanco off of him. so Tomas Perez been kidding for Lede Tomas the hero of the night end of the day night double had her yesterday with an 11th inning home run game winner for the Bills they really charge Probably hard in these. Will be bunting, I guess. Yeah, and they charge hard in these bunt situations through the Reds, and that's why Tomas took a swing yesterday. He got a big hit. One of nothing to Perez. Tomas is hitting at 254. His fifth home run last night. 19 RBIs. And Don Gallup is coming out. See, Tomas Perez will take the chance to talk to John Vukovic. Vuk also a part of history here at Synergy Field. It was then Riverfront Stadium when Rick Wise pitched a no-hit game, the last out of that game of Pete Rose line drive to Vuk. Vuk also is part of history of this team that he helped make the big red machine. As you see the Pena. Remember, Vuk was a starting third baseman one year for them, and they didn't like the way things were going, so they put Pete Rose at third, put a guy named George Foster, and left. Wow. Vuk lost his job, <laughs> and the rest is history for the big red machine. Vuk still ticked off about it. He said, how could Sparky do that to me? <laughs> 
Blas Perez still bunting, but he takes high, and it's two balls and no strikes. Who checks out the dugout? Let's see if Larry Boas still wants the bunt on. And Perez checks out Boop. Second and third. Yeah, they had the bunt. They never took it off. And Tomas puts a perfect bunt down. And as Harry says, Chen makes a heck of a play on this. It's going to be a little tougher play for Aaron Boone the way he was coming in. And Chen does a nice job. And the Reds will bring their infield in with the runners at second and third and one out. Marlon Anderson, the batter. is one for three with a run scored. One strike to Anderson. My time he is three for seven against Bruce Chen. Larry Bowett saying he wants this matchup as opposed to bringing a right-handed hitter off the bench and a right-handed pitcher coming into the game. So he'd rather Marlon Anderson go against the left-hander Chen than whatever right-hander he'd bring off the bench and then Bob Boone would count. Strike to Marlon Anderson here in the eighth inning. Sign. He did call him out. He's making the sign that the run scored. That's all. I what the third base umpire is getting involved in that for. So give Anderson a sacrifice fly to run batted in. Polanco thrown out at third. Bills score a run without a hit. No errors and none left. So we go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. The Phillies have an insurance run. It's 14 Phillies. Behind Pedro Martinez. Omar Garcia Parra is 23rd home run for the Bow Sox. Cleveland shutting out Kansas City 3-0. Ellis Burks is his 30th home run for the drive. Later on, Texas at Oakland. John Hill Park against Mark Motor. Anaheim will be at Seattle in big games there. And the night game tonight will be Minnesota at the Chicago White Sox. Here are several changes for the Phils. Jason Michaels comes into play left field, replacing Ricky Lede, who was taken out for a pinch hitter. Tomas Perez, who was the pinch hitter, stays in the game to play second. 
the new pitcher is Dan Plesak. Plesak appearing in his 40th game. He's won two, lost one with a save, 409 ERA. 22 innings, 15 hits. Struck out 27 while walking 11. Ten hitters hitting just 130 against him. Larry Boa trying to get a couple hitters out of Plesak here with Griffey and Dunn coming up. to Junior Griffey. It's flight out to deep center and twice popped up. Bills lead it 4-2 here in the bottom of the eighth. Fly ball right field. Bobby Abreu coming on, makes the play. So Griffey has retired one down here in the eighth to bring up Adam Dunn. Griffey Jr. 0-4-11. Phillies have gotten him out all weekend. That's Santiago, and he is probably up for Aaron Boone. As Bo would like to get police act to get these two left-handed hitters out. Dunn has fouled out, doubled and scored a run, and struck out. Perez drifts out and he puts it away for out number two. Two quick outs for Plesak. We'll see if Larry Bowe gives him a chance to go ahead and get a third out against the right-hander. And now that it's not the tying run, it looks like he's going to do that. I don't know, though. you think with Santiago ready, he would have come and gotten him, but he's not going to do it. Fly to right, twice single. They don't have any more left-handers on their bench either. They used up Brandon. One ball and no strikes to Aaron Boone. Juan Castro, I think, moving into the on-deck circle to bat for the pitcher Chen. Here it is. Down out over the plate, and Aaron gets it way up in the air and hits it out of here. Now they're going to bring Wiley Mo Pena, Willie Mo Pena off the bench, a right-handed batter. And Larry Ball ready to make a change. And there's Aaron. Well, now with 30 steals, he's stolen two this afternoon, and he has 25 home runs, is knocked in 86. Just kind of strolling around in the dugout. Willie Mo Payne uses it back for the pitcher. And now Boa makes a slow walk out to the mound. Makes 
Jose. Yes, there is throwing. I don't know if he's trying to pitch Jose more than one after saving both ends of the doubleheader last night. Bring in Santiago to try to get this right hand hitter out. Makes the wave to the bullpen. So this will be it for Dan Plesak. Goes two thirds of an inning, charged with a hit and a run on the home run by Aaron Boone. It looks like it is going to be Jose Mason. Pitch more than an inning. Sir, here comes the big man. We have a pitching change for the Phils. Phils lead 4 3, and we'll be back after these messages. Base on for Dan Plesak. For Mason, this will be his 73rd game. He has won four, lost six. Tied a club record with 43rd save last night. Saved both ends of the day night doubleheader. His ERA is 2.95. 73 in the third inning, 63 hits, 24 runs. He has struck out 62, walked 38. Opponents are hitting 232 against him. All time single save leaders, Mitch Williams, holds the club record, tied yesterday by Jose Mason. Mesa saved 42 last year, then the Rock Steve Bedrosian had 40 saves in 87. He's asked to go more than an inning if he is going to notch his record setting 44th save. This is really Mopanian. His pinch hitting for Bruce Chen. Maybe hitting at 250 since his call up. With one home run and one RBI. Houston, that one doesn't matter. The Cardinals have already wrapped things up. Albert Pujols is his third home run of the year for the Cards. Colorado jumped to a 3 0 lead on Arizona in the second inning. Larry Walker is knocked in a couple, and the Dodgers will play at San Diego a little later. That'll be Omar Dahl against Adam Eaton. Chris McReedsma is the new pitcher for the Reds as Johnny has straddled off the fly ball to center field. Griffey puts it away, one down. Jason Michaels, who is hitting out of the number nine spot. Michaels hitting at 273, batting for the first time. Reedsma is 6 and 12 with a 3.75 ERA. Started 21 games. This is 10th out of the bullpen. 134 and a third innings. Struck out 83, walked 44. Opponents hitting 268 against him. One 
one strike to Jason Michaels. should handle, even though it was a tough play. Scored a hit for Jason Michaels. So Michaels at first base for Doug Blanville with one out here in the ninth inning. Wild pitch. Move Michaels to second base. So he is in scoring position. One for four. Those that love to pick this run up. Throws a breaking ball in the dirt there, and Stanette not able to get over in time to control it. A ball of no strikes.
schedule to face Mason in the bottom of the ninth. Reggie Taylor, Kelly Stanett, and Gookie Dawkins. Bouncing ball is shortstop. Dawkins throws Rollins out. And Phillies go down in the ninth. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Hills lead by a run. It's four to three, Phillies. Jose Mesa trying to set a club record in saves in a season facing Reggie Taylor, who is 0 for 3. Mesa has one other save this year of more than one inning. Oddly enough, it was for Brandon Beckler on the 1st of July against the New York Mets. And he went one in the third innings. Well, this place is alive right now. I mean, they would love nothing more than to see a come from behind win here in the last game in this yard. Synergy field, hard ground ball, but Jay Roll has it. That's one of them here in the ninth inning. And it'll bring on Kelly Stinnett. Now Stinnett was the man who won the last game Cincinnati won on Thursday night at Pittsburgh. He took on Mike Williams. Deep, a grand slam home run. And they say will be careful with this guy. He's been a high hitter, one strike. He's trying to hit it out. One for three this afternoon. He was nine for his last 19. So he's trying to stay away from the double, have to lock on the line, and the outfielder's deep. After eight innings, we've seen way too many of them in this place. Yeah. One ball and one strike. Breaking ball just missed. Two balls and a strike to Stanet. Trying to get Stanet to chase. And a strike to Stanet. There's old Mesa looking at a Nelson wondering where that was. It's three and one to Kelly Stanet. Said about some of them. I mean, they probably are outside. That one was. They're close. Pitch before that, certainly looked like now, it was a strike. Larry Bow is coming out to the mound to send them down. That's all. You know, like, all right, you're not getting the calls, but we got to uh, we got to win this. Something he knows how to say really well, and sometimes he'll get a little distracted by an umpire. You just ask Johnny Estrada right there where the pitches were. What he thought. Jose is upset. He's just trying to settle him down. Needs two more outs here. Gooky Dawkins will be the batter. Dawkins is one for two since entering the game with a double. Dawkins hasn't been here much this year. He's batted into one double play.
play. Nothing in two to Gookie Dawkins. We'll say for a little bit of a hanging breaking ball that time. Got away with it. He knows it too. He can get some outs on his breaking ball. Curve and slider, but not that one. Board and causing the fans to make some noise here and this is the final game of Synergy Field. One and two to Dawkins. Strikeout for Mesa. Two down here in the ninth inning. Now all that stands between Mason is record setting 44 save, and a Phillies win is Todd Walker. That's a good fastball. He threw there. A little bit of a cut to it. You can see Dawkins really pulling off. Had no chance to get to it. Walker, two for four this afternoon. Second should be the game. Tomas Perez throws out Todd Walker. Jose Mesa, the Phillies' all-time saves leader and saves in a season, his 44th save of the year. He had to go an inning a third to get his 44th save, and he saves it for Brandon Duckworth. So Mesa saves all three games in this weekend sweep in the last games played at Synergy Field. Jeff Cooper told him, the Phillies trainer, when we got here to Cincinnati, he said, you are going to throw the last pitch at Synergy Field. And Coop was right. Jose Mesa did just that. So our Budweiser play of the game is Mesa sets a club mark for saves in a season. Trying to stay away from Walker the whole time. Got that one down and in a little bit, but Walker got on top of it. You hit it to that guy, it's an out. Tomas Perez guns him down. Boy, what a horse Mace is. They'll sweep the Reds in this weekend series, the final series at Synergy, and Mesa saves all three of the wins here at Synergy Field. We'll be back with the totals and a recap of this afternoon's 4-3 Fightins win right after these messages.